Awesome. That was awesome. Wait. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Love it. Peter hey. Erskine. Hey. Hi, everyone. For those of you who don't know Peter, he is your two time Grammy award winner. Yes. Two time. And you've played with. I'm a two timer. <laughs> you've like Weather Reports, Steely Dan, Joni Mitchell, Diana Krall, and it's just to name a few. I think it's something like 600 albums. Yeah. 
The albums and film scores over 600. <laughs> okay, so he's, uh, you've been playing professionally for years and years, and I can't believe that you're actually in our studio. I, me I remember when I picked you up at the airport after a horrible experience at the border. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just glad you're here, and I can't believe that this, this uh, Drumeo experience has brought me here sitting beside you, and so welcome. Thank you. The, the, uh, the, the good folks at the uh, Canadian immigration were terrific, but the, but the line was, uh, <laughs> well, it was a two-hour line. Yeah. And uh, that took me by surprise, but it's great to be here. It's a, a beautiful part of the world, beautiful part of Canada. Yeah. And uh, it's a fantastic studio. Awesome. Great. Today we're going to talk about uh, playing brushes with all styles of music, and I also really want uh, Peter to talk about some of the apps that he's developed, and we'll get to that maybe throughout and a little bit more at the end of the lesson as well. And so tell me about this. You said you're going to demonstrate playing brushes with heavy metal music. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I just heard of a, of a, of a new metal genre. That, uh, Gent? No, not a band. Uh, it was a, some kind of, what's it called? <laughs> Gent. Isn't that, that really There's some new metal I'm not. something. Uh, no, it, but it might be what some of the kids are listening to these days, but... Uh, uh, I'm a bit of an old timer, and uh, that might be a, uh, a preconception or a misconception that a lot of folks have about the brushes. Yeah, that it's just uh, yeah, old people play brushes. Um, but I find myself playing the brushes uh, in a lot of styles of music, and um, certainly if you're working with singers outside yeah. of the metal genre. <laughs> Uh, brushes are, are very useful. Um, now, most discussions about brush techniques center around uh, patterns and, and, and how to play uh, uh, a basic kind of a jazz beat where the brushes are moving around on the head yeah. like this. And, and that can be a bit daunting if you've not done it before. Uh, I thought it would be cool today for me to demonstrate that, of course, because that's yeah. an essential part of playing the brushes, but also how to use brushes in different types of music and um, kind of taking stock of what it is a brush does or what a brush can do. Yeah. Um, now, much like its namesake, a, a brush, you can literally pull it across the surface. You pat the drums. Well, as, as if you were... Uh, putting some paint, or not quite like brushing your teeth, but um, like a paintbrush. And it's not a bad idea just to get comfortable and familiar with uh, moving your, your brushes around on the head uh, in any direction, and not worrying yet about how that fits into a beat or a time feel. So a, uh, a good starting uh, point, I think, would be to... Uh, to th think of the drum head uh, kind of like the face of a clock. So you've got 12 o'clock, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, mm -hmm. 7, 8, 9, and so on. And uh, let's start with each brush, uh, one after the other, uh, at 12 o'clock or at the top of the head, and we'll bring the brush towards us. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Now I'm applying some downward pressure, so I'm not just playing with the tip of the brush, but playing at least the... Uh, with half of the surface of okay. the brush, all right? Now, what I'm gonna try to do here, one, two, one, two, is to connect the strokes. So we have this legato connection between the right hand and the left hand. Now there's no beat that you can easily discern or hear. I'm just mm -hmm. creating a smooth sound. Now I'll do the same thing, but I'll add a point of articulation when I first place the brush down. And I try to get these to sound more or less the same as one another. So it's a gentle patting motion. I'm not hitting it hard. And the goal is just to get comfortable doing this and to get some consistency. 
All right, let's try another direction, maybe side to side. Now I'm holding the brushes uh, with the traditional grip, just like a drumstick. You could also do this match grip if you like. Okay. And just like with any good grip, I've got my fingers wrapped around the brush, but it's kind of nice and free nice. to move. Yeah. Um, it's a relaxed grip. Okay. Right, so I go back to side to side, now I'll add a articulation. I have to kind of figure out how fast I'm going to move my arms. And notice that I am using my arms. I'm not trying to do all this movement just by articulating the wrist. Mm -hmm. Doing a diagonal. Now I'll try diagonal going the other direction. Now I'm using a different part of the brush, more the side of the brush. So on and so forth. Hmm. You half circles and whatever. Um, so that's a good kind of uh, warm up as well as uh, just a basic technique thing to practice. Uh, this basic moving around of the brush on the head. Uh, in, in case you're at all uh, intimidated about the brushes, um, you, you're going to be jumping into the mud with them here. And yeah. <laughs> there's, there's nothing to fear. Now. Your basic timekeeping uh, motions, uh, particularly when playing triplet based music like jazz, um, you can do it one of two ways. The right hand can go clockwise, the left hand counterclockwise. And the two hands together, it's much like a swimming stroke. Yeah. Going the other way, it's like you're gathering weed or <laughs> hugging a bunch of puppies or something. Right? <laughs> Um, I, I do it this way. Uh, and either way, it doesn't matter. Well, each one offers uh, some advantages. Um, most drummers seem to do it yeah. the opposite I way. Do. You do it like that. Yeah. Uh, Steve Gadd does it this way. Elvin Jones did it this way. Hmm. Um, this must have been the way that my teacher taught me many years ago. <clears throat> Although I'm uh, somewhat self-taught on the brushes. Uh, I just listened to what I heard drummers doing on recordings and then just tried to imitate it and mm -hmm. figure it out on my own. Um, starting with this, the left hand would be operating, let's say, around the seven or eight o'clock region of the drum head. And I'm just moving the brush in a small circle. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. I can do the same with the right hand up here around one or two o'clock. Three, four. Put the two together. Well, you've got a sound, but there's not much of a beat, is there? No. no. So to add a beat, I'll just lift up the right hand on every quarter note. Three, four. Now that's very simple. We've already got a, a pulse that someone could sing to or people could even dance to. When you're playing the brushes, most of your rhythmic articulation is going to come from the right hand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably 90 some percent of it. Now I'm playing the ride cymbal pattern in more or less a circular motion. Even though the right hand is doing most of its movement in this clockwise manner, you'll notice when I go boom, boom, the syncopated rhythm in between the quarter note, I'm coming back this way. And you'll notice that I play the brushes with a glancing motion. I'm not playing up and down and I'm not trying to rebound off the head. Now, what's really important about this is that um, the concept of dead sticking, which is where you would you know, take a stick and instead of rebounding off the head, you yeah. 
Yeah. Just play into the head and leave it there. Popular with a lot of jazz drummers. Um, we do this with the brushes. So I try to maximize the amount of time that the brush is staying on the surface of the head. Yeah. So uh, when I play a rhythm, like something as simple as that, as soon as one hand or the other is done playing the rhythm, it's back on, on the drum head. Yeah. Instead of so, so essentially with the ride pattern now, I'm just playing in these circles. If I want to get fancy, I can go over and under, but it's the same motion. Notice with the right brush yeah, that I'm holding it very loose yeah. here so I can pull it across and then snap it back into place. Yeah, using your fingers, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the snap, I used to joke that um, it's a little bit like, uh, imagine your brush is just uh, minding its own business sitting on a snare drum head and a fly comes along. And it lands there. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so, any rhythmic articulation, as soon as you're done playing one hand or the other, the brush stays on the head. ride pattern, D, 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 and I straighten it out. Now if I do this slower, softly with his mm -hmm. song or slower One, two, two. Now, killing me softly that the drummer I'm not sure who played drums in that but he was doing the sort of reggae thing of playing the bass drum yeah. on the backbeat which Steve Gadd wound up doing quite a bit of and I like to do it as well um, I'm I'm doing a number of concerts uh, this year with a wonderful singer named Mary Chapin Carpenter. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we're playing the music from an album that a uh, wonderful arranger, uh, Vince Mendoza, uh, put together. And, and uh, these concerts are with an orchestra. So uh, an orchestra is a very big boat to mm -hmm. steer. But I can do it just with brushes and very soft, you know. Um, a lot of it is... Uh,
So it's it's very gentle, yet it's yeah. it's very insistent, you know, and it really will hold any sized band together. Yeah. Uh, and that's all I'm doing. The left hand does the function, you know, it's not it's not dumb or pointless what it's doing there. Uh, it's providing a cushion of sound. It also dampens the head. Okay. So it stops that ring. Mm -hmm. Are you focusing a lot on the speed on the left hand? No. Not at all? Good question. A lot of times, um, it's kind of random. Really? Yeah. Which, in a way, just helps, I think, sort of, uh, I don't know, it's not that it elongates the, the beat, but, it, it, but it's, 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 it's like it's its own little playing over the bar line, so it gives it a different kind of a flow, so mm -hmm. it's not the... So it, it, it may seem counterintuitive to do that, but um, yeah. so I'm, I, I guess, you know, a lot of times the way I, I uh, perceive or, or conceive of, of rhythm, it's, it's, uh, it's like more than just one layer. There's two or three layers, like three-dimensional chess or something. So I'll have these kind of subcurrents of, 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 of something going on and, and and yeah, so the left hand is kind of doing it sort of like its own little very, very, extremely, unbelievably subtle Elvin Jones playing over the bar line kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I noticed you've been checking the, uh, the chat. Is anyone asking about brushes? or? Uh... Oh, there's lots of questions. We have a chat. I can't even follow that just because there's hundreds of messages, but there's already lots of questions. Wow, there. good. So good, we'll get good. to the questions at the end. And for those of you who haven't... Um, been for a, a live Drumeo lesson before. Just so you know, if you want to leave a question, there's a box right below the video that says submit a question. Fill out your question and hit the button, submit, and it won't reload the page or anything. And then I'll be able to ask Peter later if we have enough time to get through all of them. We'll make sure that we, okay. we get to as many questions as possible. Um, now, playing the brushes, uh, uh, let's say in more of a strictly jazz context, um, a lot of times we'll we'll be using them for ballads. Yeah. Now I'm playing the hi hat with my heel down mm -hmm. because that's the only way you can really play a hi hat softly. If I have to try to control the weight of my leg. Yeah. Uh, it knocks me off balance and it's hard to do. So. Even though I'm not one of those strict, you know, you got to be heel down every time you play the pedals. Uh, if you want to have good control, it's an, and if you want to play softly, you, you need to be able to play heel down. Yeah. There's, there's, it's almost impossible to do it the other way. Um, I'm all for making anything you do with the kid as simple as possible. Yeah. You know, uh, as, as we increase the uh, tempo, we decrease the amount of movement. Sticking. Yeah. Now, here's a real good exercise for you to, to try at home. Um, with just the brushes, see if you can play a melody. Um, and since we're talking about jazz, uh, uh, let's take Billy's Bounce. I, I, uh, okay. I sang that, or I tried to sing that when we did the... Uh, the, the lessons for the Dromeo. Yeah, the members, yeah. Members. Um, uh, in, in case you don't know it out there. Uh, now, I don't have all those notes on this drum, do I? No. no, I've just got the brushes and the strum. But I can imply those notes by using dynamics. So if I just went... Uh, 
That sounds pretty dumb. Yeah. Sounds pretty square. But if I went. I'm not only using dynamics and I'm using the dead sticking, I'm also using stickings to my advantage. So it's not all left, right, alternating. That's one thing I wanted to mention. The other thing I wanted to mention, when you heard me doing these kind of uh, uh, embellishments, yeah. the temptation is to try to play them as fast as, poss as possible. But I try to play them a little bit slower than yeah. as fast as possible, uh, which broadens it out, it fills out the beat nicely, and you, uh, you get a better, um, I don't want to say articulation, well, I would say articulation. Uh, for the listener, they can hear it better. Yeah. When it's, uh, it just sounds like, <laughs> you know. So one of the rules I have with my students is that you usually don't need to play the brushes as fast as you think you do. Mm -hmm. Which is different from... Fine line between hip and not hip. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. yeah. So it's a lot of fun. Um, you can use uh, rudiments when you play brushes. Uh, much time to dead stick when I move it up there. <laughs> Now, I promised uh, different styles of music. Um, did a recording a couple years ago. It was for a uh, theater soundtrack uh, that I composed. And uh, at the last second, I thought, hey, I'll play drums with the, uh, with the piano and the bass and the guitar. So we started setting up the drum set. And the engineer said, uh, let me get a, a, a microphone for the hi-hat. I said, no, I don't need a hi-hat. Just, just snare drum and bass drum is all I need. Mm -hmm. And um, all I played, it, it, it'll sound dumb by itself, but it was uh, one, two, one, two. Three. they 
call that the truck beat or the tra train? Oh, that's the train, not the truck. <laughs> the train beat. What is the truck beat, though? We've the truck make beat. Something up. <laughs> no, I got confused because I played the train beat on a jingle for it for t Toyota truck. Okay. That's right. <laughs> this is the Toyota beat. <laughs> Think. If you're from Nashville and that's not correct, my apologies. It's really nice. It's, it's such a, a pleasant texture. Yeah. So if you were playing like a, in, a, in a session and just using sticks and they really wanted something different, would you ever go to something off the snare and like actually hitting, just like playing a, a regular standard groove with the brushes a lot? Do you get asked to do that a lot? When you say off the snare... Like, like right now, the ma majority of the things you're doing is, is on the snare, so it's... I mean, like... Uh... All my friends down in New Orleans, it's the 45th uh, anniversary, anniversary uh, running of the, um, the Jazz and Heritage uh, Festival okay. down there. So big shout out to everyone in cool. New Orleans. Cool. Um, and a special shout out, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure he's not watching, but uh, to a wonderful drummer um, named Alan Robinson. Yeah. And... Um, Here's, we're going to get off the brush thing a little bit, but here's an interesting uh, little side note. Um, you know, I, I was a drummer in, in big bands, and all of a sudden I got tapped to play in Weather Report. And, yeah. and I think a lot of people, particularly drummers, were probably scratching their heads. What's this guy doing, you know, playing with Weather Report? Um, and neither Joe Zavano or Wayne Shorter had heard me with either of those big bands. I think they liked the idea that, hey, here's a guy that, that played with Stan Kenton. And, mm -hmm. and they were kind of thinking of Stan Kenton back in the 50s, I, I guess. Um, well, I, I was playing with Maynard Ferguson at the time, and, and, and Joe and Wayne had, had actually both worked for Maynard back in the day. Um, but Jaco Pastorius came to, to hear me play with, with Maynard. Mm -hmm. um, and he recognized something in my beat that he liked. And I wasn't sure what that was, but I figured, well, we must have listened to a lot of the same music. Well, one of the things I did listen to, and I didn't realize, I didn't make the connection at the time, um, you know, before Jocko was playing with Weather Report, he was playing with uh, Wayne Cochran and the CC Riders. Okay. And uh, uh, the Wayne Cochran band was, it was a really great rhythm and blues band. Um, the drummer was, was uh, Alan Robinson. He um, uh, was a terrific bass player, uh, I think Artie uh, Galeniak is, is his name. He was playing in the band at the time. Anyway, when I was a freshman in college, I was 17 years old, I got a hold of this record. Mm -hmm. um, it was a bass player in Chicago, it was in Chicago now, a guy named Eric Hochberg. He said, man, you gotta check out this record. So I get the record and I'm really digging the beat and I really like the way that this drummer is playing. And I realized later uh, that his drumming was a, had a very big influence on the way that I approached R&B and, 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 and music with a backbeat. Yeah. And so when Jocko heard me, you know, a few years after I'd been checking out this album, that had kind of become part of my DNA, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, and he recognized that, and, and he was comfortable with that because he had such a good time working with Alan. Mm -hmm. 
in this band way back then. And, and, and so I, I contacted Alan. I said, I really owe you a lot of thanks because it, you were a very big influence on me, uh, even though we're almost about the same age. So it can come from, from surprising places, and, and you really want to try to stay open um, to, to checking out all sorts of different things because that's how we get our styles, you know. Yeah. There's nothing really original. Nothing new under the sun, as they say, but we all, we all blend different amounts of what we hear, and we blend it in our own way, and then all of a sudden it comes out sounding like Jared or sounding like Peter or Alan Robinson or whoever. Um, so uh, anyway, I just I thought I'd say hi to Alan. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, did you want to play another track? Sure. Um, and I'll, I'll start preparing some, I'll go through some, through some of the questions and then we'll do some, okay. some questions after that. So if you guys do have questions, now would be the time, well, especially now, if, if you haven't already submitted them in the box right below the video, if you are watching this live. I'm just grabbing my headphones here. Yeah. I'm going to use, uh, use one of the play-along apps, the Erskine Jazz Essentials. You'll be hearing the uh, piano of Alan Pasqua, mm -hmm. the bass of Dark Oles. Uh, that opening piece, by the way, was uh, Bob Shepard on saxophone and uh, the late Dave Carpenter on electric bass. Mm -hmm. um, there's no melody. Uh, there's no melody in jazz, no. There's no melody uh, in the Jazz Essentials. Uh, we left it open for, uh, well, for copyright reasons and also uh, so that vocalists or horn players, yeah. any kind of soloist, can add the melody. Uh, the cool thing, if we could switch over to the, uh, to the iPad screen, um, when you're playing a tune, you can mute the drums if you want. Uh, you can change the uh, levels. Of any of the faders, click or no click. Um, you can also record yourself, which is very, very cool. And... Um, of course, if you want to look at the music, if you're the bass player, let's say, uh, there's the chart, and you can print this or email it directly from the app. Um, but the mixer is a very exciting thing, so it's music minus one, but with the kind of infinite possibilities. Now, I'm going to I'm going to use uh, a music minus one here, uh, just playing brushes, and show you how you can practice basic timekeeping, but also start focusing on or looping certain brush playing challenges. And, and in this, I'll start doing some kind of triplet variations uh, between the brush and the hi-hat. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this is not something I would, I would do in performance, because it would be a bit much. Yeah. But hey, no harm, no foul. We're just practicing, right? <laughs> exactly. All right, so let me... Uh, Put these in, and let's see if we hear some sounds. Okay. Just turn my phone on. Here we go. I'll mute the drums. And, whoops. Hold on, folks. Here we go. This is live, right? <laughs> okay, so there's lots of good questions coming in already. So keep submitting your questions. If, uh, if you guys have any, one that I wanted to ask you right away. Uh, one, oh, two, there we go. one, two. Let me play. Thank you. 
fast kind of triplet. You know, I would make a mental note to self. Yeah. Out of all the things in the world you could try doing on that tune, maybe you don't need to do that. Um, but that's the kind of thing that, you know, if you weren't playing with a band or what sounded like a band, you could... that for a while and it might sound really cool yeah but then you get with you know a bass and a piano and then it doesn't quite right. so that kind of practicing then allows you to hear okay there's clarity in in that idea the other idea it just sounds like kind of a lot of drums yeah cool okay about these apps uh, if you guys want to know more about all the apps, they're listed on your website, PeterErskine.com. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure if they follow you on Facebook, they can find out about them, as well as just go to the, the Apple App Store. Yeah, on the App Store, you can find them. Um, and there's some links. I, I do some uh, demos uh, by way of my YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you go there, please subscribe. Yeah. Um, the cool thing about the apps is you can also record yourself now. Uh, using the built-in mic of your device or your uh, headphones, ear earbuds or ear pods, whatever. They, yeah. A lot of them have microphones. Or you get something like the Zoom uh, plug-in mic. Uh, I think it's the IQ5. Yeah. Or uh, Apogee makes one, the MIC. Um, and you can record yourself as you play and then make a mix and mail that to yourself, mail it to your teacher mm -hmm. if you're working on, on these kinds of things. And it could be jazz with brushes, jazz with sticks. Uh, we've got straight eighth note grooves. We've got swing grooves. The Afro-Cuban app, uh, Aron Serfati put that together. It's okay. a wonderful, wonderful bunch of tracks. So all the apps have a, a, between 10 to 12 mm -hmm. tunes, um, a lot of different tempos. Uh, the Code of Funk is uh, uh, David Garibaldi's uh, mm -hmm. uh, kind of repurposing of, of his book and disc into the app. And with the mixer, you can mix his drum sets. You can really bring up the snare drum to hear all that incredible ghosting stuff he yeah. does, uh, the hi-hat work. Um, or you could, if I get brave enough, maybe I'll, I'll try playing brushes to a Tower of Power tune. Yeah. But that would be something. That would be something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see if we get there. Okay. Um, and then uh, the Joy Luck, which was an album I made with... Uh, wonderful pianist Vardan of Sepian, and my nephew Damien Erskine. Yeah. Um, and you can be the drummer uh, in, in that trio if you like. Cool. Yeah, definitely check them out. I always say playing to music and real music with real musicians, this is like the closest you can get without actually physically doing it. And so mm -hmm. I think that's an awesome, awesome thing. I told him, it's like, I wish I would have done these apps, and <laughs> now you're doing them. Well, sometimes I wish you would have done them too. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, the, you know, the really cool thing about, about uh, the mixer component is yeah. that, um, let's say uh, you and the bass player, uh, he or she can get together with you and the two of you can practice along because you yeah. can take the bass and the drums out or if you and the piano player want to work uh, along mm -hmm. with the bass tracks um, or maybe you and a tenor player. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the uses are, are infinite and, and they're also really great if you want to prepare audition uh, materials. Yeah. Um, because so much of the play-along stuff that I've seen is, you know, it's kind of fun and it's sexy, but, you know, uh, fusion sambas in 7-8, it's not what most, like, colleges are looking for when they're, if you're yeah. applying to the jazz program. So here, people can really hear what your beat sounds like and how well you, you can play with the other members of a rhythm section. Cool. Uh, ready to take some questions? Yes. Awesome. Okay. This one's from Eagle Fly Free. He says, "Our steel brushes." That's that his name. Well, this is username. Oh, <laughs> Eagle Fly. E Eagle. Oh, Eagle, Eagle Fly. Fly Free. Are steel brushes better than nylon brushes, or does it depend on the type of music? Uh, good question. I think that uh, that wire brushes. I never thought about what they were made of, but I guess yeah. it's steel. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I, I was using nylon brushes for a while, but uh, I much prefer the sound and the grab that the 
metal wire gets. Um, different brushes have a different stiffness to the wire. Um, my favorite brush is, is this uh, Heritage brush made by Vic Firth. Mm -hmm. um, they're not too stiff and they're not too soft or loose. It's mm -hmm. uh, like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It's just right. <laughs> um, but other brush alternatives can, uh, can certainly come in handy. Uh, I used to be a big fan of the Ed Thigpen um, brush, and I'm forgetting the name of it. Uh, and there's, there, you know, there are Blastics, and they're also yeah. multi-rods, and uh, Steve Smith has the Talawans, and um, the Gad brush has uh, kind of a bent tip. Yeah, for, angled, angled tips, yeah. For, uh, I think, a sharper articulation. Mm -hmm. um, for, I guess for playing louder stuff that would, that would, uh, would cut really well. Cool. Uh, this question is from Jonathan, and he says, what about brush technique on the cymbals? Is it the same principle as the drum? Pardon me. Um, you know, brushes on cymbals. That sounds nice. That sounds nice. Generally, is, is a waste of time. Yeah. In my opinion, um, you can sometimes do it, and I'm playing with a little bit more tension and a snap to get articulation. If it's not too fast of a rhythm, it makes sense to me. So for isolated taps, you can do stuff like that. Yeah. But to play a ride pattern with a, with a brush, um, I, I don't find myself doing it very often. Huh, okay. Uh, lots of questions about the equipment. And so I don't know if we... You have lots of, of, of sponsors and stuff that have sent up equipment here. Do you just want to quickly go over it or? Yes, excuse me for not mentioning it earlier. Um, the drum set I'm playing here is the new Frequent Flyer kit. Mm -hmm. And this is something I've been dreaming up with, uh, with the good folks at DW uh, for about the last four years. And uh, this came out of uh, my desire to want to travel with my own drums. Yeah. Um, the airlines have kind of a, 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 a sacred ceiling in terms of the size limit. Uh, if, if a suitcase or an instrument case exceeds 62 linear inches, then they can charge you a lot of extra money okay. for the size. It's oversized baggage. Um, and if it weighs over 50 pounds, then you have excess weight. Mm -hmm. Um, this all adds up rather quickly. Um, at the time we started working on this, the airlines were a bit more generous in, in terms of not charging for even one suitcase. Or you could have two suitcases. Yeah. That's changed uh, uh, recently. Um, but uh, with a lot of airlines, you can still check two bags. Or on, I fly United a lot, so I'm uh, privileged to, to check three bags. Um, so anyway, uh, the idea was to compromise... Uh, if I may use that word, uh, the size of the floor tom, so instead of being 14 by 14, it's yeah. 11 by 14. The rack tom we kept at 8 inches deep because mm -hmm. it's, it's just hard to beat an 8 by 12. We, yeah. uh, we may experiment more with, with the 7 by 12 possibility, but the 8 by 12 just kept coming out sounding the best. And the snare drum is 5 by 14. Mm -hmm. um, we could have gone 4, but we like five, and if you stack the floor tom, rack tom, and snare drum into one case, uh, bingo, you're just under 62 inches. Okay. Uh, the bass drum is 12 by 20. Uh, any old timers out there will fondly remember the Ludwig Chazette kit. Um, uh, they're maple drums. Uh, we have the 60 degree, the rounder kind of bearing edge. Um, and the drums have a, have a terrific sound, uh, really easy to set up. The hardware is much lighter. It's smaller than most DW hardware. Um, 
with the hollow aluminum legs on the floor tom. The bass drum spurs just kind of fold in like, okay. like the old days. Uh, and uh, we don't have the, the exact cymbal stands here, but uh, DW now has an ultralight flush yeah. bass stand, and you can pick it up with your pinky finger. It's so light, yeah. and it works great. So this is kind of my new thing now. A couple of great cymbals. These are Karopes, the new uh, K Zildjian cymbal, okay. K-E-R-O-P-E. Uh, you, may, you may pronounce it Karope or Karope. Mm -hmm. um, we have a 22-inch ride. inch crash ride with three rivets. Beautiful pair. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that the bells are flatter than the, than the, like a regular A Zildjian. Yeah. These resemble. I mean, when I first took it out of the box, I was shocked. It was just like seeing a ghost. It was an old, <laughs> old K Zildjian yeah. symbol. Um, for the hats, I'm, I'm using 14-inch new beats. Mm -hmm. It's there are a lot of great hi hats out there, but I I, I always come back to these. Yeah, um, they can do anything. They're versatile. They're super reliable. Play soft. Play strong. Um, and I'm using uh, Remo Ambassador coated heads on the toms. Clear ambassadors on the bottoms a fiber skin diplomat on the snare drum, and I have a Power Stroke 3 uh, on the bass drum batter. The, the, the drums do come with Remo heads. Cool. I just, I like these particular ones. Yeah, and also that uh, that Samson speaker behind you, we're not actually using it, but ah. we tested it, and it's really cool what it, uh, what it actually does. So if you don't want to practice wearing headphones, which, I recommend because that changes the way you're hearing your touch on the instrument. Um, the easiest way to, to work with this stuff, whether you're the drummer who's, who's practicing with it or if you're a teacher working with students, mm -hmm. uh, the Samson's really hip. Uh, it's rechargeable, so you don't need to have it plugged in. You can move it anywhere around in your studio without worrying about where the plug is. Uh, and it's uh, Bluetooth wireless. Yeah, so, that's so cool. So... Uh, with my students at school, I'll just dial a tune up on the app while I'm at my desk, and uh, it gets sent over to the speaker. It mm -hmm. fills the room up with, with great sound. Um, and it's interesting. Uh, uh, I was speaking uh, not too long ago with a Vibes and Marimba player, and she was using uh, the jazz app. It's kind of like a, a karaoke. And it was uh, She was playing... Uh, uh, at an art show opening, and she had one of these, okay. and then was just playing along with it. And so yeah, the the Samson uh, Express speakers is really terrific, and I mentioned the brushes, and and my favorite stick is uh, I, I like my big band stick. Yeah. I, I use it with small group stuff, but the the throw and balance uh, just feels so good. It's very comfortable in my hands. Nice cymbal sound. Notice, by the way, the technique. My fingers are wrapped around the stick, but I'm not gripping it tight. The wood is free to vibrate. That's yeah. part of the sound. Yeah. Sorry, I had to, had to sneak a little lesson in there. <laughs> Next question. I think I want to ask you a question. I know there's lots of other ones here, but that... We, uh, I, I talked to you a little bit about it right before we started. How you always incorporate your left foot into the grooves. Is that something that just started happening naturally, or is it something you consciously like, practiced and did exercises around? Well, yeah, I worked on it. Um, when I was young, my, my teacher uh, assigned me the, the Jim Chapin uh, okay. book uh, for independence, and, and I really hated working out of it. Um, so, as a result, when I started working professionally, I started to become aware pretty quickly I didn't have the control that I needed to have as yeah. a professional drummer. So I just started um, challenging myself to, to play the left hand, the bass drum, or the hi-hat, um, different kind of rhythmic counterpoint, while still keeping the ride cymbal 
feet uh, intact and swinging. Yeah. Stop for a second. That's very simply just the right hand, left hand. Yeah. You notice that because this is a swung eighth note and I'm playing this swung kind of triplet feel here, that the, the unison is, is there when it needs to be. You must be able to play unison. On the drums. We get so used to, even when I was younger, I was so used to kind of And if I tried to do something different with the hi-hat, the, the whole, my balance was off. And, yeah. and I was kind of, my body was fighting my musical impulse. So I learned to relax that a little bit. Uh, and then going back to these exercises, just started putting the hi-hat in different parts of the triplet or tuplet, you know. <laughs> on the second tuplet. Yeah. Now you're just showing off. Okay, <laughs> the next question is from Obi Wan. Uh, can you only practice brushes on an acoustic snare drum, or can you practice on a practice pad or something else? Um, there are some practice pads that are designed for brush practicing. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the laptop is a device made by uh, Rhythm Tech, and that has a, a set of snare wires running underneath a pretensioned okay. Remo head. Um, and that's terrific, uh, not only for practicing, but for rehearsals. Mm -hmm. When I was on the road with uh, Diana Krall, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times she'd, uh, uh, she'd say, can we do this quick rehearsal? But they didn't want to set up the drums. And I said, hey, it's fine. I'll just bring my, my laptop thing. And then I could just play the brushes and we could run a tune down. Mm -hmm. uh, really, really handy. Uh, Remo makes a... Uh, 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 I've, Sorry, I forget the name, but it's basically a fiber skin uh, type head mounted on a frame. And that will sit on top of the snare drum. It's a much more quiet way to practice brushes, but you could set it on your lap. You could set it on a tabletop. Yeah. Um, if you're traveling, throw it in your suitcase. It's no big deal. Um, there, uh, there are a couple of other uh, pad manufacturers who do kind of, Accommodate brush box. Box. Yeah, pizza box, uh, um, phone book. Yeah. Steve Gadd uh, did that one lovely demonstration using a, 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 an empty uh, box that would hold a two inch recording tape. Oh, okay. um, I did a film score once. Uh, we played on a suitcase. Mm -hmm. It was a Jim Carrey film called The Majestic. And, and, okay. and the, the, the character, who was actually one of my students, who, who did the on screen drumming. Um, yeah, he's playing on a suitcase, so we did the recording on a, on a suitcase. <laughs> Sounded good. Cool. Uh, this one's from Vincent Schultz. Uh, hey, Peter, big fan of yours. You. Uh, you brought jazz into my life. Are you playing in Germany in the near future? Um, hmm. Not in the near future. I do have some things coming up. Um, the last time I was, uh, you know, the last time I was in Germany uh, was in November, uh, which was quite exciting. It was the premiere of a concerto for drum set and orchestra mm -hmm. by the British composer Mark Anthony Turnage. Um, four movement piece, 30 minutes long. Um, the second movement is all brushes oh, okay. and very fun to play. 
there's no rhythm section. I mean, it really is a concerto for drum set and orchestra. I'll be doing it with the Los Angeles Philharmonic at the Hollywood Bowl, September 9th. I'm really wow. excited about that. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, a little over a week later, I'll be doing it with the Helsinki Philharmonic in Finland. And um, I think next summer, I may be doing a fair amount of playing uh, in Germany. This summer, it's pretty much, uh, it's mostly Italy and Latvia and Warsaw and uh, Bratislava, I think. Uh, okay. okay. This one's from Mark. Uh, and he says he's a huge fan and he's wondering how you'd suggest handling the transition from sticks into brushes. Um, well, let me show you. Um, can I do one more play along? Yeah, we would, we'd love right, it. Yeah. We'll play along. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll switch back and forth more than I normally would maybe on this piece just to see what I do. Sure. Um, if I had my, uh, uh, my uh, standalone stick bag uh, with the little built-in table, it's, yeah. it's a cinch because you can just put the brushes right there. Um, some drummers will put their sticks like... Yeah. Here, I don't even want to try doing that. I might hurt myself. Uh, get these earphones in here and let me... Uh, so this is a song that's going to be off of your... One of the actually, no, this is, uh, this is the Wayne Bergeron Big Band. Okay. I thought this would be fun. Uh, let's see. This is the Waltz of the Flowers.
So, switching back and forth, I mean, finally I just said, <laughs> I'm just going to throw them on the ground. Um, so that's what I did. But uh, generally I'll uh, just put the brushes okay. on the... Uh, the, the the edge, the hoop here of, of the floor, Tom. Uh, you can also leave them here if you like. And you were changing one at a time. I think that's what I noticed every time is you wouldn't try and throw both sticks away and get the other ones, and you'd always put your... Yeah, I would, I would always kind of at least get one stick in there. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times I'll... I'll uh, if, if I'm switching from, let's say, brushes to, uh, to sticks... Like, Yeah. One stick. Anybody uh, remember the, the Sears catalog? Uh, I the remember old the Sears, Sears Roebuck, and they, 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 they sold a, a, a drum set. Yeah. Designed usually for children, but uh, some of them might have been full size. Anyway, it was an inexpensive drum set. And um, for some reason, they would always pose the model, whoever the kid was behind the drum set, with one brush and one stick, and it always looks something like, uh, okay, front camera, something like this. <laughs> okay, Peter, one more question, and then um, we have to cut it short, because we're we're already, we already went long. We uh, did, but yeah. I went by fast. Oh, we're, we're already like almost 20 minutes over. And gang, you gotta, you gotta sign up, because I, I did five lessons earlier today for, for the Drumeo subscribers. Just for Edge. Just should people subscribe to Drumeo Edge. Yeah. It's worth subscribing just for these lessons. It's some really, really cool stuff it we is. got into. It's very cool stuff. I We're peaked. I peaked earlier. And you, I played the unbelievably most like fast brush. I just couldn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more question. Okay. Uh, this is from Spencer Arthur. Uh, what are some of your favorite recordings of drummers playing with brushes? Ah. <clears throat> okay. Well, anything with Mel Lewis uh, would be great. Um, uh, probably my favorite brush player uh, uh, is Elvin Jones. Okay. And um, there's an album he made called Dear John C. Mm -hmm. for John Coltrane. Um, some wonderful brush playing uh, on that. Um, there's some great recordings with Roy Haynes playing brushes. Mm -hmm. uh, one I like a lot um, is... Uh, an Eric Dolphy album called Out There. Um, and it's kind of a chamber thing. It's, it's Eric Dolphy on alto saxophone or bass clarinet, um, George DeVivier playing bass, Roy Haynes playing brushes, and Ron Carter playing cello. Uh, and it's a, it's a really, really interesting recording. And of course, uh, uh, Philly Joe and mm -hmm. Jimmy Cobb. Um, uh, but the Elvin is, is, is the one that always comes to mind first. Cool. And, and, of course, uh, Jeff Hamilton, uh, worth checking out. Clayton Cameron is, is a brush master. Um, but check out the way, you know, like Jim Keltner, Russ Kunkel, uh, Gad, of course. Yeah. Um, the way these drummers use brushes. It's inspiring. And, and uh, you know, get yourself a pair of brushes and have fun with them because it, it is a world of fun. It'll add a whole, whole bunch of colors and a new dimension to your drumming. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for My coming My pleasure. Out. We really appreciate it. And you guys, check out his website, petererskin.com. Follow him on Facebook. Just search his name and you'll, and you'll find his page. And I left the, the book out of camera range, of course, but uh, I did want to mention sure. um, the autobiography I wrote, which is as much a, a chronicle about the band Weather Report and kind of the musical times that I was lucky enough to grow up in. Uh, it's a real fun read if you're... So uh, electronically inclined, the iPad version has literally uh, over a thousand photos in it. Okay. It's, it's quite amazing. Um, but the print version that Alfred Music has published, uh, also available on Kindles, a lot of fun. Um, so, what's the title of the book exactly? The book is called No Beethoven. Okay, check out No Beethoven uh, on the Kindle and through Alfred Music. 
Kindle, iPad, Alfred Music, okay. and the apps. Uh, sorry, Android folks, uh, it's, this is taking us longer than we thought it would to uh, to develop for that platform. But we've got some new titles on the way. Ralph Humphrey is developing an odd meter cool. thing. We have a Samba one in the works, and one of these days I'll put a big band one together. Awesome. Well, thank you so much once again. Been a lot e of fun. Everyone, go and check out all the stuff that that Peter's doing. We had so much of so much fun having him here, and. If you check it out and you support him, maybe he'll come back one day. <laughs> I'd love to. So thank you so much, and we'll see you guys again very soon.